Quran burning in Sweden sets Muslim world alight with rage. Recently, a far-right Danish-Swedish politician and activist, Ramsmus Paladan, held a demonstration and burned the Quran in front of the Turkish embassy in the Swedish capital of Stockholm. Several Muslim countries have condemned Sweden over this incident, including Saudi Arabia, Somalia, Kuwait, and many others. During the demonstration, Ramsmus put, made derogatory comments about Islam and immigrants before proceeding to burn a Quran. He has held many such demonstrations before. Sweden is seeking to apply to be a new member of NATO along with Finland amidst Russia's continuing aggression towards Ukraine. The uh, recent Quran burning incident affects the process to gain membership since all 30 member states must ratify their application to join NATO, including the Muslim majority Turkey. Paladin's protest was followed by a separate demonstration held by pro-Kurdish activists. The demonstrators held, uh, stepped on a photo of Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan. In response to these protests, Turkish Defense Minister Halusi Akar canceled a meeting with his Swedish counterpart, Paul Johnson. Protests broke out in Istanbul and Ankara due to Paladin's act. Demonstrators held the Quran, shouted slogans and chants, and burned a photo of Paladon at the Swedish embassy in Turkey. So this was a huge story this week. And so I'll do a little bit of a recap. This man, Ramses Paladon, we've talked about him on this show before because he has done a lot of Quran burnings in the past and it gets a very large reaction every time. And he is the founder of a far right party in uh, Denmark, as well as Sweden. He's a citizen in both countries. And th that far right party in either country has never actually won a seat. And last time it was up for election, he only got like 156 votes. So he's not actually very wow. popular, but he's just very notorious. And he's actually faced travel bans from various countries because of his activities and countries not wanting him to bring all the troubles that follow him. And so he did this protest in front of the Turkish embassy. And um, he's known to do stuff before where he will go purposefully to a park in a Muslim majority neighborhood and cover the Quran in bacon and then play catch with it with a bunch of people, stuff like that. And after he did this in Sweden, he then went over to Denmark and did the same thing in Denmark within like the span of a few days. <laughs> wow. And there have been huge protests around the world surrounding this in Bangladesh, uh, Tehran, um, Bahrain, Saudi Arabia, like all, oh, huge protests in Pakistan, naturally. Like, so all over the world, you know, led by the TLP, just hundreds, you know, way more than hundreds, just tons and tons of people protesting against this, burning the Swedish flag, burning the Danish flag. And it's caused a legitimate political crisis for Sweden because they're trying to join NATO and they need approval of all of the members to join NATO. And Turkey was already going to give them the most pushback, mainly because of their affiliation with pro-Kurdish separatists, the PKK, which the Turkish government as well as the United right. States called terrorists. But, um, now this just adds insult to injury and it's made the situation like 10 times worse. Yeah, yeah. So so Sweden has certain Kurdish activists or terrorists that want Sweden to send to Turkey for, you know, for uh, persecution and all that. Um, but but Sweden is holding back on some of them, I think, because you know, Turkey's legal justice system is not very good. So it might be against their human rights, really, uh, human rights um, standards to send that to send them to Turkey. So that's why Turkey is like, well, if you want to join NATO, it's so it's so bad that every single country have to approve like any country can veto every any NATO country, just one of them could just veto it and they just it has can't to be join unanimous. It. it has to be unanimous. Um, yeah. But this is, I don't understand. I mean, I do understand they'd be dumb, but why do they, just for the sake of asking it, 
why would they think why would they hold sweden responsible like sweden is not able to stop this man because they are they don't have the laws to stop him like they so, like why they like holding an entire country of sweden responsible for burning the quran even though it's just one dude it's one person within sweden burning the quran and they're like oh stop him like turkey and other muslims are telling sweden oh if you want what we, well we're not going to stop you from joining nato like what do you want them to do they legal they, they have laws that allows the man to do what he's doing and there's literally nothing they have nothing within their power to stop them because they would have to violate their own law and they're incapable of violating their own laws like even the prime minister if they wanted to like okay fine let's, we want to join nato so let's stop this man they're like sorry prime minister you don't have the power you don't have the power so what why would you penalize sweden when free speech laws in sweden is making them incapable of stopping the man i don't understand so what they want from them huh. it's funny that that is what you dial into first immediately armin because there have there was a swedish politician or minister i forget who it was and i forget his exact position in the government but he had a statement basically saying that he is going to be working with the turkish government to the way it was phrased in the associated press was so funny to me i'm you know um paraphrasing but it was like basically we're going to be explaining to him that as swedish citizens we don't have or the swedish government does not have control over these things and that it, the actions of one citizen are not representative of the actions of our government da, da, da. so like this government minister is actually going to be having to sit down and have a conversation where we're like that we do all the time where it's like we separate the ideas from the people <laughs> like they actually came out and said on Twitter, the prime minister came out and said, like, we, we don't condone this. They actually called it out as they, not only did they not condone it, they, they, they denounced it. They were like, we don't agree with this. We don't like this, but we have free speech laws and well, the guy is going to do what he's going to do and we can't stop him. Right. I mean, what do you ask for them to do? They're coming out and like, oh, we apologize to the Muslims of this country. We want them to feel safe. Like they did everything. They did everything they can do. There's nothing else they can do. What do you want them to do? But I know, a lot of people found the Swedish government's response like to, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like too conciliatory. I thought it was like basically appropriate, like as a government. Um, yeah. And um oh my gosh yeah i don't know what they expect them to do and so this dude <laughs> ramsmus he said this man he said that he is going to go burn a quran in front of the turkish embassy every friday until sweden is part of nato i'm oh, like wow. dude i don't think that that's gonna get the results that you want <laughs> I don't know if he's trolling or what. No, I think he's being blamed. I think he wanted to just do the Quran burning because he hates an Islam and everything. And now he's being told that, dude, you are actually putting Swedish civilians at risk because Sweden needs to join NATO to protect, you know, Swedish, Swedish civilians. And they're like, you're actually harming Swedish citizens by this Quran burning. And like, he's like, oh, crap. Like, how do I respond to that? Like, OK, here's my response to do to reverse the effects of me Quran, my Quran burning on us not joining NATO, I'm going to I'm going to pull it. I'm going to I'm going to do 180. I'm going to continue burning Qurans until we join NATO. So if you want to stop me from burning Quran, then <laughs> accept us. But they're not going to do that because that will make more people burn the Quran if you do that. One of the but ways that he framed it was basically saying that he is protesting against Turkey's imposition on Swedish values and his rights as a citizen. To like, he's saying, Turkey, I refuse to let you dictate how I express myself, da, 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 da. All right, well, I'm trying to read the super chat. Okay. Um, Varun is saying, why didn't Allah, thank you, Varun, for the $2 super chat. Thank and why you. Didn't I... Thank you so much. So the super chat says, why didn't Allah save the book? uh didn't even rain 
um, yeah, I mean, I mean, to be fair, Allah, the creator, if there's Allah, he shouldn't care about piece of paper being burned that much. Um, I mean, there's more things that he hasn't stopped. But okay, some I think something I'm, I don't remember is, con, is confused is saying, but what's the connection between Quran and NATO? So let me spell this out. So Turkey is part of NATO. Turkey, Sweden is trying to join NATO. Um, and to join NATO, any country vetoing um, you joining NATO, that means you, can, you don't join NATO, right? So Turkey, as a member of NATO, can basically say, sorry, NATO, sorry Sweden, we're not going to let you in. As just one country, any one country in NATO can just block the new membership. So given that Turkey, given that Turkey is not happy with Sweden, they could just now, this very important thing for Sweden, um, I mean, it's for two reasons. One is the Kurdish, uh, sep, you know, separatists that Turkey wants from that living in Sweden, that Turkey wants them to be sent to Turkey. Um, and now over this Quran burning thing, Turkey could be like, yeah, we're not letting you. Sorry, Sweden, you burn the Quran and we don't let you join NATO. And Sweden is like, but it's not us. It's just one person one person within sweden right so it's it's, it's very um i mean to me this is quite telling quite telling because turkey's inferior islamic values is just being demonstrated right um if quran burning is one of the reasons why turkey is not letting sweden join nato is it shows how because why is sweden trying to join nato there are, ever since Russia's aggression, there's uh, there's fear for people's safety. Sweden is basically trying to protect its civilians of, from harm, from war, right? And what we are hearing right now is that Turkey is holding pieces of paper, the burning of pieces of paper above the safety of people a, a people of an entire country so you at one on one side you have the safety of the people of an entire country on the other side is you have pieces of paper and turkey as a country is using those pieces of paper to threaten the safety of an entire of the safety of entire of, of the people of an entire country you can see where the priorities are you're, they're, they're screaming to the world, this is our priority, pieces of paper over people's lives. So I don't know what more obvious demonstration of the inferiority of Islamic values do you need. And they're screaming it to the world proudly. So there's that. And Prometheus is saying, it's funny how easy it is to get the whole Muslim world on a ride. Yeah. And Mustafa I mean, they're doing this to themselves, though. You know, they, this when you burn the Quran... And you give this reaction, well, that's what the guy the guy wants this reaction. So literally, technically, technically, you are the one who's burning the Quran because you're basic, you're motivating people. <laughs> like it's easy to get reactions out of you, and you're motivating people. Like, oh my God, look, I could be on the news if I do this myself. So you are basically giving this to them. You're like, hey, burn more Qurans, please. Yeah. And this guy's particular tactics are to do it to basically try to incite a reaction to then prove his point that Muslims are violent and don't belong in his country. That's his whole rhetoric. And that's his entire rhetoric. And so people are giving him oftentimes the reaction that he wants. Um, okay, Prometheus is like, is this that is it is this that difficult though? Sweden can just sign a bilateral agreement with the US as sort of NATO. No, 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 no. Prometheus, it, it that's not how any of this works. Not at all. Yeah, it's not it's not that easy. Yeah, okay. yeah. I, at, not at all, like not even close. But yeah, go on, Susan. Um the Mustafa is saying what makes it so difficult is that many of us here would do the same thing, but in much better faith and not for xenophobic purposes. Yeah, like if those if there's anyone who's not familiar with our channel, like Armin and I do not have a problem at all with desecrating the Quran per se. We've both done it ourselves live on this channel many times. Yeah, but yeah. our whole for point fun. is it's a, a protest in support of free expression and challenging norms and asking questions about which is more valuable, life or a piece of paper, 
versus this man who literally is like a frothing racist. <laughs> and like I said, does it to provoke reactions that he will then use to paint broad generalizations against an entire population of immigrants. So mm. yeah, completely yeah. different intentions. Um, Sasan is saying, I just don't get it. What is the big deal with burning the book? It just symbolizes the fact that the person is rejecting the ideas in the Quran. He is not attacking them on a personal level. Well, this, well, guy, this guy is. He's <laughs> attacking them on a personal level. He's a racist. He hates them and he wants them yeah. out of the country. No, don't, def so, no, just, don't defend this guy. This guy is a bigot. No. Yeah. yeah. We can defend his right, but like, do not defend his character. <laughs> Yes, yeah, def exactly. That's very good. That's very good. You had, uh, you want me to show something else about this? Yeah, news? so this is something I saw today or a little while ago, and it kind of goes to the point that you were saying about people's values and what people really values. And I thought that this was very poignant. So I follow this man on Instagram. His name is Omar Haidari, and he is an Afghan activist. And his work is just surrounding raising awareness about Afghanistan. And he wrote very poignantly about this issue. And I thought it was so interesting to have someone from his background come with this opinion. So he said, the outrage worldwide over the disrespect to the Quran in Sweden by an extremist, the demolition of a mosque in India, and the ban on the face veil in Denmark. But this same outrage is missing when the Taliban commits far worse atrocities in the name of Islam in the Quran. Wait, can you swipe? Mm. Can you click to the next slide? Let's channel this same energy to the fight for 17 million Muslim women rights in Afghanistan. In the name of Islam, Taliban banned women from education, employment, travel, sports, parks, visiting male doctors, and even mosques. The world must speak out. And so basically he goes on talking about how, like, yeah, the silence of Muslim majority countries towards the atrocities committed by the Taliban against women is also one of the major contribution contributors to the rise of Islamophobia worldwide. People face more outrage over these things than the abuse of majority Muslim women and girls. And I thought that was like a very scathing critique. What did That's you think of that? Too. No, that was pretty, um, I mean, um, people don't, can't tell the difference between what about is them and calling out, calling for consistency. And I have explained the difference between them uh, many times on this show, but for people who know this is a demand for consistency, not what about is again just to be just to be clear, what about is is when um you point out that A is wrong and somebody says like no A is not wrong because B somebody else has also done B and B is very similar and if that's wrong that's also wrong so people don't pay attention to A. But um so because B has happened A is not wrong. That's what about is but Demanding consistency is when you say no, A is wrong and B is also wrong, and they're both wrong. That's 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 demanding consistency, and that's what's happening here. And I think it's fair. It's a fair point. Does that make sense? That the difference between what about is them and demanding consistency? Because people can't. Sense. Yeah. Okay. You can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free. Too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary, Japanese God, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.